So in this video, we're going to look at another example of solving Cauchy-Euler equations, uh, but this time we're going to look at an example that involves repeated roots. Uh, in repeated root problems, as you remember from constant coefficient problems, we have to, we only get one solution, and so we have to modify our solution to obtain a second solution. Uh, and so we're going to start with our Cauchy-Euler equation. And in order to obtain the characteristic, or in this case, the auxiliary equation, we are going to assume the solution x to the n, so some power of x. And then we're going to take our derivatives, x um, to the n minus 1, and then we bring the n down. Uh, y double prime, we bring our n minus 1 down as a constant, and then we reduce the power by 1. So we get x to the n minus 2. And we substitute this into our equation. So y double prime is replaced by this, which is our expression here. And then y prime is replaced by this expression here. And then y is just replaced by x to the n. And so here we're going to combine x squared with x to the n minus 2. And so when you um, multiply the same base, you add the exponents, you get x to the n, and we distribute our n to get n squared minus n, and then here x combines with n minus 1 to get x to the n, and so we factor out our x to the n, and we obtain our n squared, 9n minus n is 8n, and then plus 16 x to the n cannot be 0, at least not all the time, and so we obtain um, the condition on n to be n has to be equal to negative 4. Our polynomial here is a perfect square, and so we only get one solution. Now to fix this, as I said, what we do is we multiply by something, but we can't multiply by x as we did with constant coefficient problems, because then we would get x to the negative 3 in this case, and that will not solve, that will not satisfy this equation. So instead what we do is we multiply our initial solution by natural log of x. And we can verify this using reduction of order if we want, but I will leave that to another problem. So these are our two solutions, and we want to just verify a couple of things about them. So first of all, we want to verify that they are in fact independent. And so to do that, we will calculate the Ronskian. So we have the Ronskian set up here. So we have our initial x to the negative 4 solution and its derivative using the power rule. And then we have our second guess solution, our original solution times natural log of x. And to do this derivative, of course, we need the product rule. So we bring our negative 4 down, reduce the power by 1. And then x to the negative 4 times 1 over x is the same as multiplying by x to the negative 1. And so we obtain x to the negative 5. And then we calculate our determinant. We multiply these two. And then we subtract the product of these two. And it simplifies so that the log terms cancel out. And we're left with x to the negative 9. And if you recall from Abel's theorem, uh, we take our coefficient up here, and we there's a calculation that we can do uh, involving the integral of uh, the negative of this function up here. And this is consistent with that theorem. So now what we want to do then is we just want to verify that, in fact, this trick that we used does in fact give us a second solution that will satisfy the equation. And so what I've done is I've taken the derivative of my y2 equation, and we got that from our Ronsky, and of course we did that up here, and then I took the derivative a second time, y2 double prime, in order to obtain the second derivative. And so uh, negative 4 times negative 5 gives me positive 20. Reduce the power by 1 gives me negative 6. We do a chain rule, or a product rule, rather, and we get 
uh, negative 4x to the negative 5 times 1 over x gives me negative 4x to the negative 6. And then the derivative of this gives me negative 5x to the negative 6. And combining like terms, we obtain one term that involves a log and one term that does not. Now, if we substitute these into our original equation, it was x squared times y double prime, which is this guy, and 9x times y prime, which is this guy, and then our original y, x to the four, x to the negative fourth natural log of x, and then we combine like terms. So x squared times x to the negative six gives me x to the negative four, and x squared times x to the negative 6 also gives me x to the negative 4. Notice I've got x to the negative 4s everywhere. This was when we factored out our x to the n. Uh, 9x times this gives me negative 36. x times x to the negative 5 gives me x to the negative 4. Uh, I get my 9x here, and then, of course, this one doesn't do anything. Let's see, what can we combine? Well, negative 9x to the 4th and positive 9x to the 4th are the same but opposite sign, so they cancel. And then we have positive 20 and positive 16, which is positive 36, and minus 36. And they're all the same, x to the negative 4, natural log of x. And so they also cancel, and they do in fact leave me with 0 as to be expected. And so we can say that in fact it is the case that our solution to our equation in terms of x is going to be c1 x to the negative 4 plus c2 x to the negative 4 natural log of x.